Hello, lovelies. Okay, so I picked out the yarn for that hat that we designed. Um, and I said the dark dark green we're gonna do for the, the rim and the two top horns. Then the, the cap itself will be purple. The uh, head horn, nose horn, whatever, that horn that's sticking out, we'll do a light green. This yellow is for the eye. I'm gonna do one of the eyes yellow and then a big black X. I think that'll be creepy a little bit. And uh, Hershner's, it's a DK weight and it's lemony. This will be, this is what I used for the Snow Owl. Liked it, it's a three weight and it just doesn't stick out quite as um, far as a four weight. So I'm gonna stick this over there these these two um as you can see I've, I've also used these colors these are my company colors so i i have several of those shades these are both mainstain basic yarn they're four weights this is green how original um this color is purple boy they really need some creative juices flowing in the uh department of naming these things and this is a red heart super saver also free uh, four weights these are all four weights and this is called patty green okay so i guess we'll make some things for saint patrick's day with that all right so these are the the, the main colors that we're going to use for the the cap part of the hat starting with the dark green so we're going to move these out of the way now also, what I have here are two crochet hooks. Um, I haven't decided yet which size. This is a furls. I probably have it upside down for you. It's a nine millimeter furl. Bought that through Ola Joe's site. If you're going to buy any furls, go to Ola Joe, the crocheting sailor, and buy through her affiliate. It doesn't cost you any more, and she gets some bonus points. This one is an Ami, and it's a 6.5, and I got the Ami for like 10 bucks on Amazon. Hope the lighting is good. I'm just using natural sunlight from the French doors. Here's scissors. Oh, the little cats are fighting, so if you hear any meowing, it's just Moo and Freya um, not liking. They, all, they both want the same space. Okay, measuring tape, obviously, because you want to measure your head if if you're making it for yourself you just lift it up and you know wrap it around your head this is what i usually do but for sake of this um if you're making it for somebody else you kind of want to have them measure where the rim is going to be placed on the head so underneath the neck and above you know on the forehead and over the ears so that would be the area that you'd want to measure to make sure you get it right and also leave a little wiggle room not too much because then the hat's going to be floppy and not fit properly. So I measured my head, it's 23 inches. And in that space is an, used to be an abundance of knowledge that has eluded me in the last years. Okay. Um, then some stitch markers. Um, I, I just, I, I buy my vapes in these little containers and they're really perfect because they open right up and so I've got some stitch markers and darning needles and actually these are those cute little hair clips that you can, I have like very thin hair. So this like, I can put my whole head in a ponytail with this. But anyway, I throw those in there because these are actually really good for like stitch markers because you just kind of grab the space and pop it off. It's, they're easier to use than that. But if you want to be more precise in the actual stitch, of course, these are similar to that. So that's what we need. Oh, and scissors. So that's all we need to get started. Um, I'm gonna pause and come back because I wanna get this started. I'm not sure which, which needle to, to use yet, hook to use yet. Okay, I'll be right back. Like my arm right in your face. All right, that was quick. What I wanted to do was in deciding on which size hook to use, I, I don't go by what they tell me. I don't even look at that stuff. I feel it out myself. I started to do the rim because we're starting with the rim of the hat um, and I started using the eight 
millimeter and I just feel that that's a little too loose and wonky so we're gonna put this aside oh yeah that's fine I'm not as neat as most but yeah, that's me all right so we're gonna start over again I'm gonna do I didn't try it with this but I think that was definitely too wonky and the holes were too big and I want it to be a little bit tighter so we're gonna do the six and a half six six point five uh, you all know how to start. This is how I start. I just manually do my loop. I leave a little bit of a tail because I might want to tie that or tie that to another, the other yarn that's going to be added on or, you know, just to, I could always tuck it in. So I don't go really super, super tight. This is going to be interesting for me because I'm crocheting away from my body. I usually crochet on my lap. So I'm learning, but, um, all right. So the rim... We're going to make it, I said 23 inches was mine, but maybe I'm going to make it 24, 25. And I don't know, let's see how thick, how, let's see how thick we want it. So let's go one, two, yep, sure. Three, that, all right, let's go four. I don't want to make it too thick because I want to add the eye and the nose to be on the top of the the front of the hat instead of the top of the hat so if I make this rim too thick it's definitely going to push all the uh, design up so one two three four I've got four there you know I'm going to use that I'm going to go three and use that fourth for my you know chain one and turn your work so Let's go back. So I'm literally doing three. Okay. Yeah, it took me a while to get used to these hooks. I The first time I tried them, I was like, ugh, no way. And I was going to give them away. And then I said, let me try it again. And I got used to it and I like them now. Okay, so I did, I went my chain, chain one, went back three. Like I said, I'm doing a three. And now we have a choice, like I said before. Um, in the other video, if it's not attached to this, is you can go through both of the loops if you'd like. You can go only through like the back loop, which is closest to me, or front loop, whichever, the one closest to me. And then you'll have an effect if you do all of them the same. Or you could do closest to me loop, because I don't know technically which loop that is. And here's my three closest to me chain one and then when I turn my work I can go back into the closest to me hoop loop or if I want a ribbing effect which I might as well do I'll go through the back loop and going through the back loops a little bit tough because it's it's facing away from you right now so if you face it this way you could see the two I hopefully you could see the two loops like I said I don't know how the lighting is right here I've never done one of these where I'm at with no head overhead lighting so I'm gonna I did my chain one and turned and I'm gonna just go into that away from me loop and then the next away from me loop and the next away from me loop so this is three stitches and then chain one turn and now I'm gonna alternate to the close to me loop close to me loop Pull one here. I gotta get a little more yarn there. And close to me loop. And I'm gonna chain one. And we'll see. I'll do a couple of these. We'll see how it is. Now I did the close to me, so I'll do the away from me loop. Yeah, and it's also dark yarn, so it makes it a little more difficult to see what you're doing. So the away from me loop. Yeah, right. It is a little weird, like holding my hands up and away from me to be doing this, but. Let's see do I like this I don't know let's do a couple more and see so now I did away from me now I'll do next to me facing me loop and chain one now we're going to be away from me loop at least I'm sitting on a rocking chair instead of the stool that stool was tough because it made me taller and uh, well the last one I did I was sitting on my bed which was very wonky and wobbly for you but um, at least it's a little bit taller. This one, this this chair is lower, so it's a little easier. All right, so that's 
if you could see it with the lighting. And I'm also using a thicker, uh, um, a thicker, a 6.5 hook. So if you use a smaller hook, obviously it's going to be a tighter stitch. And I don't know whether I like that or not. So I don't actually. I'm um, going to just take it apart, frog it, ribbit, ribbit, ribbit. Start from my loop. And for me, I've decided I'm going to do three. Yep. Three. Chain an extra one. Go back. Yeah, right. My God, like my hands don't want to work today. The arthritis has gotten worse, but it is what it is. Um, and I'm going to go through both. And that's how I'm going to do my rim. So that's what I've decided. This way I don't even have to pay attention. Did I do the last one a back loop or the front one a back loop? If you get, you know, distracted while you're crocheting. And chain one, turn your work. Yeah, right? I actually crochet much better than this. This is, this is like, I look like a beginner. Chain one. Well, I am kind of in the beginner, but very much wet behind the ears beginner. All right, so basically this is what I'm gonna do. Chain one, turn the work, and one, two, I hate to do that because if you're counting, three, chain one and turn, one, two, both, both loops, chain one and turn, go through both loops, one, two, three, and chain one and turn. Okay, so that's basically what I'm going to continue to do until I get the desired length of the rim that I want. And we will be back. All right, so my video shut me off and I was babbling on like an idiot, as usual, uh, and didn't realize that I wasn't recording. <laughs> Lord, load it, load it. Anyway. I don't know where it ended, so I'm just going to kind of go through what I just said. So, three stitches, chain one, turn your work. Three stitches, chain one, turn your work, going through both loops. This is what you get. And it does stretch. So even though my, my head, I want 23 inches, you, you can't measure it without, without the stretch, because that's going to, you have to accommodate that. That's going to be a part of it. So I'm under... 23 inches in this if I laid it out without pulling it but now that I've stretched it out and it's always good to try it around your head when I try it around my head it fits fine now another thing that I, I consider when I do these is I'm going to attach them so you make sure that you don't have any twists and if you notice my starting chain is on this side my ending chain, I even if I have to add an extra chain, uh, an extra row, I want my my last chain to be on this side, and that is because. So now I did my three, and I'll show you. Tighten that up a little bit. My chain one, and now I'm going to connect them. So we have one, two, and three. The three holes. So I chained one, I'm gonna go through the opposite side and then go through the one, two, third. The very first one, if I can get it, I'm going to slip stitch it and pull. So that's gonna make that nice and tight, okay? And you could, you could go through all four of them if you'd like and then do a chain, um, or you can go through one of them if you like and do a chain. I'm just gonna go through both, because I did add an extra stitch. And then my last one, both sides, double chain, pull it through. That was, that middle one was a, um, an actual, just a regular chain one, chain, not a slip stitch or whip stitch, whatever. And this last one, again, I'm gonna pull it tight, but I left this loop a little bit loose so I'm pulling tight just the one near the end okay so this doesn't crunch up the connection 
Then we get our snips, give it a little bit of a tail, pull it through. And now both of my tails are on the same side. If you want, because you only do the slip stitch, I, I just worry that this stuff's gonna fall apart in the laundry. You know, it's a hat, you gotta wash it. And I just did two little knots. You're not even gonna notice. So that's the, that's the close to your head, the wrong side of it. And I stitched it together. We turned it inside out and there is our rim. Okay, not bad. Looks kind of cool. I like that. And that is, you know, you like I said, you could do front post, back post, alternator, or whatever. But that seemed to work the best for me. I think when you do front post, back post, because you're only using one thing of thread, so it, it it's a little bit thinner and all that. So for now, well, do I do the nose now with this? Because I'm going to do the, no, I'm not doing the nose with this. I'm doing the nose, the horn nose with the light green. These might be the small, small horns, which I haven't figured out how to do those yet, but I'm not worried because I will. All right, so the main part of the hat is going to be purple. So it's going to be pretty dark. This will be nice because look at how the the dark green and the the medium purple are the same hue and then with that lime green nose coming off of it and that bright yellow eye in there there's going to be some color pop being an artist i like color pop and i'm not talking about soda because we don't call it soda where i'm at okay so now let's grab some of purple Again, these are all four weights. The only three weight that I'm gonna use is the yellow for the eye. And, oh, you know what I didn't do, but it's okay. Oh, sorry about the wiggles, I put my arm down. What I didn't do, and I did say to you on the other, uh, when I was designing it, what I didn't do, but I, I didn't feel the need to, was to chain, before I connected, was to do a, a single crochet around the edge the reason I didn't was because I think that edge is going to look really nice. Okay, so I did not do a crochet, single crochet around the bottom. So that's going to be the finished edge of the rim of the hat. But now we're going to do the hat. So I'm going into the connection. This is where we connected it. Just put my hook through find my end again this is all how I do stuff and I like to tie knots I should have been a boy scout I was a cub scout which is weird but I was a cub scout only because my mother was a cub scout leader for my older brother and they included me instead of sticking me in a closet when they were away okay so let's move this out of the way so now look at the stitches that's a stitch, that's a stitch. So the stitches are gonna be a little bit different looking. You're gonna go in deeper in some and not so much in the other, but it'll work and it'll look cool. So I'm, I pulled it through, I'm making myself a, a loop. I am not chaining one and then going back into the same stitch. I'm gonna chain one and then just go to the next because I'm gonna do this in the round. All my three tails are behind where I'm going to grab my yarn and make my crochet, single crochet. Then this big one here is another stitch. Sometimes I, well, often, because I'm OCD, I will lay out the threads so that the green is alongside with the green and the purple is above and hold it that way so that if they do show through the stitch, it's the right color. So that's number two. Then that's a little bit of a weird one here. This one doesn't look so bad. If you're doing front post, back post, it's a little bit weirder. And then I'm gonna go all the way down into this one. And literally just chain around. I think that's enough for the tie-ins. I'm gonna just push them back out of my way. And again, just kinda single crochet around. 
I'm doing a little bit loosely, as hopefully you can tell. I'm going a little loose on it. Loose her up, baby, loosen her up. And just kind of going around the, the top part. And I gotta pull some more yarn. Straighten that out. Then there's that, that bigger hole. So every, every other stitch that I'm going into is a little bit different looking. You know, they're alternating the, different, the differentness. Oh, another word from my dictionary, butchering English. So anyway, I am gonna show you this because it won't take me but a second. And I really don't like to make super long videos, but if it's if it's something like a tutorial, then you don't mind because you could stop it and go back or fast forward and and it's actually showing you how to do something as opposed to just babbling. All right, so I'm just going single crochet around the edge, which if you like, you can do this on the other side, which is what I had showed originally. And I sometimes do, but I didn't think I needed to do it on this one. Or maybe I'm just too lazy. All right, so I'm going all the way around. Oh, come on, come on. Yeah, these furly, this is an Ami that I'm using, but these are ergonomic um, hooks. I like them, especially having arthritis. I could just rest it in my hand because I don't, I don't hold it very tightly. I just rest it there. And I like the length because it's not stabbing me in the palm of my hand. All right, so I'm back to the beginning. But look at how nice that looks because it alternate. Well, maybe not so much. The other one I did. Oh, I went lower on that one. Oh, well. Yeah, it still looks nice. Not as nice as... I think the other one that I did the ribbing effect, that's where I gave it, like, one of the holes was higher up and one was lower, so it, like, kind of... The one I did rusty, it kind of went up and down. This one... Didn't do that, but it still looks cool because you have the, the purple going into the to the green. All right, so that was it once around. Um, I'm going to, the one that I didn't double hook back into, I'm going to hook into that. So that's going to give me that, the, the, the chain that I lost by not going up and chaining into the same um, a hole space, I lost as I went the first round. I gained by going into that same chain all right this way you don't have to connect it and you don't have a connection line that I do if I'm changing colors like one I made I did um, a red and black and red and black and red and black and red and black and just pulled it up behind that's when I had to do the slip stitch chain one but this you don't have to do that so now it's just a matter of I'm gonna do the whole hat with single crochet so I'm going to pause this because this would be, unless you want to go to sleep and watch this, I can read you a lullaby as long as it's public domain. And I'm just going to go around probably 10 rows um, and then I'll start decreasing. So I'm going to put you on hold. And hopefully I don't turn it off like it did last time. That was so weird because I didn't turn it off. Okay, so let's pause you. Yeah. Hello again. Okay, I feel badly that I'm using such dark yarn against a dark back. Um, but I'll, like I said, I'll fix that. I decided I'm going to paint that a light purple. That'll be a good color. It won't be blinding white, but it also won't be so dark. All right, I did, uh, let's see, I started here. There's my beginning. Um, let's see, we did one, two, three, four, five, six. I did seven rows. I like, because your head is oval, like an egg. So I like to decrease my caps gradually and slowly, at least in the beginning. And then when you get to the top, you can, um, you know, really make it fast. Oh gosh, speak much. All right. So what I'm going to do now is show you is I'm, I'm at my back. Like I showed you, here's where I started on this stitch. 
I'm going to go through, go through both of those stitches. I'm going to close it because they do fall out, especially if it's something big like this. Then fold it in half. So this is the front. Grab another stitch marker. I mean, if it's not exact, it's not a problem, but you want to get basically that spot. And I'm making sure I'm not attached to anything so I could stitch right in there because I'm going to be stitching in that. So that's my back and front. But I also want to put stitch markers. Sorry, because I, I know when I move the table, it's wiggling. Well, you, you, you figured it out by now. And stitch markers on the ends. So I'm going to have four stitch markers. Each quarter, like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. Each quarter. And so the, for the first decrease, I will just do the front and the back. And then the next decrease, I'll do the side and side. So you're decreasing only two stitches per round, but you're alternating them so it gives it more of an even um, stit, uh, decrease. Yeah, right, hello. All right, so I already did that stitch, not a big deal. So to do that, you, you chain in, and instead of pulling this through, you go into the next. So I've got, I went into that one and then went right back into this one. Now I'm gonna pull it through and then go through all three. That's a decrease, okay? So then, oh, I don't like that. Also to keep your consistency, you know, the, the, the stress on your yarn. That's another mistake people make. Um, and you can you could change that stitch to stitch. So try to keep that as consistent as possible. So I'm just going to go around till I get to the back. Now I'm coming up to the side, but I don't want to decrease here. So I'm just going to push it. I'm going to stitch in there, pull it to the front, stitch into the next one because we're not decreasing there. That's just a marker for the next time around. And go all the way around. I'm coming up to the back one. So here's our back one. So I'm going to go into that stitch, move that and not pull through. I'm going to go into the next stitch, pull it up. So I've got three loops, pull through all three and there's a decrease. Okay. So that, that's, that's it. That's a decrease. It's just, you know, I find the markers help instead of holding it, you know, oh, is this halfway by folding it? Then it's just a matter of going around and I'll just do one more round. Um, again, oh, hey, get out of there. Again, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna decrease on the end. I'm gonna do that in the next round. So I'm just gonna go right into that stitch. Maybe I'm not. Go right into the stitch. I had to cut my fingernails again because I, like I told you before, they're curled down, but this one's got a snag and I tried to, file it, but it, I didn't get it right. So it keeps getting caught up in the yarn. So I'm just, I did not decrease, I did not decrease there. Come on. Here we go. Am I still recording? Cause that was weird. Yeah, I'm recording. All right. Cause it was weird because I was doing it and I hit the record and then all of a sudden I looked up and it had stopped. So hopefully I can fix that in the editing part, which I don't even know how to edit. I mean, I'm really new at this stuff. All right, so I'm not going to decrease in this one now. I'm just gonna go into that noochie and go into the next noochie. Now that's the back where we started. And now I'm going to the first quarter of the hat. I feel an animal at my foot, so Oh, it's little Freya. So here we are here. So I'm going to go to one. I'm going to decrease, go into the other, got three loops, pull through. So now I decreased on the corner. So like I said, each, each stitch around is only two decreases, which takes a while if you're going to keep doing that. But this just is a slowly 
you know, a gradual decrease, and we're going to we're going to amp up the decreases as we go up. So that's the back or front, I should say. I'm not decreasing there. Going around again to the other quarter on the side of the hat, and we'll decrease there. And I'll do this for a few rounds. Okay, we're coming up to this one, so pull it in, don't pull through, go to the next one, then pull through, now you've got three, we decreased. So we decreased on that side there. So now this next row, we're gonna alternate. This next row, I'm coming up to the back again. And if I can crochet would be nice. So now we're back at the back. So I'm going to do another decrease. Even though I decreased there and here. Oh, gee. Bark alert. Bark alert. Shut. Downstairs. Um, even though I did do that one, I'm just going to do this one. Because it's, it's it, like I said, it's still going to be a gradual decrease. So I decreased here. And I'm not going to decrease again until I get to the front. I'm going to do that for a few rows. I don't want to go too too many rows just like this because then the hat's going to be like you know like one of those egg hats from Saturday Night Live what were those people called with Dan Aykroyd and Jane Curtin and they were aliens and they had those big egg heads well if you keep doing this you're going to have a hat for them so now I'm chatting oh my I think the pink was the back so I do believe I do an increase a decrease here one Go into the next stitch, pull through both, we decreased. And you don't even notice it really when you're, unless you're, you know, know about it and you're fine tuned going over it with a magnifying glass and skipping this one because this is a side one. Well, actually, that worked out because we did skip, we're going to skip this and then we're going to skip the back. And that's why when we added that to that one side, it's a little bit wonky, but it's not noticeable when you're when you're doing it. All right, so once we get, well, you know what? I think that's enough. I think I did like, what, four rows, or yo? I don't know. All right. So now I'm back to the back. So let's just, we're gonna leave the markers in there, but see, see how it, I don't know if you could tell, it's really a very gradual yeah, maybe we'll do like two more rows. A real gradual um, decrease. Okay, so I decreased it that day. I don't know. I'll just decrease this one. Like I said, it's not a big deal. You know, I'm going to decrease all the corners. So it's going to be a little more gradual. As I'm saying, this is, you know, I know people follow patterns and they're they're very, you know, do this, that, and all that, but to me, that causes me stress. Those of you who can read them, God bless you, man, because I, I, I'm envious. Um, but following a pattern precisely really would cause me stress. So I find this way for me to crochet, because my crocheting is to alleviate stress and to enjoy it. And I find it this way of not really fussing too much. I'm going to decrease here. So now I'm decreasing at all four corners this particular round. And I might do it the next round. But yeah, doing this kind of stuff, oh, not, um, and just kind of winging it and not worrying, because imperfection is expected in, in handmade garments. Well, it's, it's expected in, in almost everything, but especially handmade garments, you know, you expect imperfections and skip stitches and that's what gives it its charm and, and, you know, makes it stand out from the rest of the crowd. So there, there, pull through both. So I'm de like I said, I'm decreasing at all four corners now. And I may do this for a couple rows. I'm sorry this is so long, but I, you know, like I said, it's a tutorial. So you could speed up. You know, if you hit the, if you hit the button quickly now, if you hit the button quickly on your screen to the side, if you hit it quickly and that pause button thing doesn't come up, it'll skip forward 10 seconds. 
if you hit it three times, it skips forward 20 seconds and so on and so forth. But if you hit it and you're not quick enough and the pause uh, symbol comes up and you hit it again, you're gonna go to a next video. So just, that's something I learned. Did I decrease here? No, well, hey, if I didn't, I did, I didn't, whatever. All right. All right, so we've been, so now we did a decrease on every one of the four corners. And I'm just gonna lay it out on the paper to let you see, if you can anyway. See how that's even brought it in more? So maybe we'll do a few uh, more rows of that, of decreasing in every four quarter, and on the quarters. And um, then at that point, I count and I'll go one, two, three, four, five and decrease. One, two, three, four, five, decrease. That kind of a thing. So it really pulls it in because that's the top of your head. And I don't like it to look flat on the top of the head. I like it to actually mold your head. All right, so I'm going to pause, hopefully. And I think I hit this. I'll be right back. All right, so I jumped the gun on the decreases on all four quarters because see how it's really closing in now and I tried it on my head and I can salvage this but what I would recommend to you is do the fronts then do the sides then do the fronts and do the sides and do the fronts and do it a few more rows I wanted to expedite the video so I started doing all four quarters so I would get like to above your ears maybe Eh, half an inch inch above your ears when you try this on that's when you want to start doing the four quarters every time every time around and that's going to pull see how it pulls it in much much more quickly so I can salvage this by just kind of going around and not decreasing a couple rows because it's stretchy so it'll plus I got a cone head <laughs> So I'm just going to go a couple rounds without doing any decreases. It, it will look fine on. It might look a little weird, you know, laying flat. We'll find out. I'll check it out. Um, but yeah, so if you're making it for a child, what I just did would have been perfect. But if you're making it for an adult, you'd want to do a little few more rows of just the front and back and side to side and then start with decreasing in each quarter all right so hope you can see this hope you're still awake yeah I've been doing the paintings I'm trying I'm still not, I'm still not in my mojo with the painting yet so the last one I did kind of eh, you know but I I'm trying to do at least one painting a week that I record and I would like to start dropping those on Sunday um, I have a few friends that are musicians that I can get some original music but I don't have like I said I, I still I still just have my phone do not have a computer so once I get a computer I can have them send me the whatever however the files are for those and then I can have some original kind of calm music from my friends but for now I got copyrighted on one of the a copyright claim second time around uh, but this one was for on one of those apps that they say it's free and you can use it and luckily it was just sitting on this side I hadn't posted it yet and it gave me a copyright claim I'm like really sometimes YouTube uh, frustrates me as it probably does many of you and they delete comments on there there's someone that leaves comments for me and then I go to, oh, I'm sorry. Um, I go to, um, I look at it in studio uh, place and I click on it and it says this is no longer available. And that happens to a lot of comments. And then I did get a comment from this person. They comment all the time because they watch all my videos. And I said, you know, it's weird that a lot of your comments, I thought maybe the other person, that person was deleting them. But no, it just takes comments away. Like, what's, it's none of their business. There's nothing remotely derogatory or offensive or anything in these comments, so there's no reason. But that happens a lot. That's something I, I haven't noticed anybody else. I'm smoking my vape, so. 
Uh, anyway, so yeah, so I did a couple rounds of this. And you know, I want to spend all day showing you this. But anyway, all right, so where's the back? The back is here. So we'll start it in the front, not a problem. All right, so that's a side. And we'll just start this from the front, just so I could show you. I really should have gone a few more rows of it being wider, but, you know, if this doesn't fit me and it's too small, there's plenty of young people in my life that I could make this for and share it with them. So I'm going to decrease again here. Now I'm at the front. And I'm going to start closing in on the crunchy, you know, the, the decrease. So now I'm going to count out. So, so basically I'm in the front red tag marker. So one, let's do this, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, look at that. Seven is taking me right to the corner, which is what I was going to do. Seven and decrease. So let me go back. Oh, hey, the heck's that? One, two, three. So what I'm doing Four is every five seventh six seventh which ironically is taking me to my my corners um, I'm decreasing so I'm back to every thing that might not happen with yours you might have some more spaces in between them so I'm just every seventh stitch I'm decreasing and I didn't count this one but it seems to be right where there's a decrease right where the corners are which will not be the case the next time around. I don't think. Perhaps it will. Who knows? All right, so I'm back to the beginning. And so instead of doing seven, I'm going to, oh, let's decrease here. Like I said, it doesn't make a difference if you're spot on, just in that area. So now I'm going to decrease. This is definitely going to be too small for my head. Um, I didn't count, but I'm going to decrease like every five. Did I just decrease? Yeah. One. I didn't finish my humongous travel mug of coffee at three, four. I don't know if I really was counting that properly, but it doesn't make a difference. No stress. So one. It's kind of coinciding with the uh, stitches. Three, four. You know what? I'm just going to go one more. And then so it really coincides with the stitches. Stitch markers. I'm saying stitches. I often say the wrong word. I don't know if you know. I, I've had a couple uh, brain injuries and just old age. And all those helium balloons I inhaled as a child um, created some, some uh, memory issues. So... I used to be smart, but now I'm just a smart arsh. All right, so we're going to decrease. And you can check it as you go to make sure it doesn't look. See how it's, you know, it's a little bit wonky because I had to add those two because I, made, I, I decreased too quickly. But this is basically it, and it's just a matter of looking at what you're doing. So maybe you go to five, then you go to three. And try the hat on. Yeah, hello. Try the hat on occasionally, just so you know where you're at. Like I said, I didn't, and I made this one a little small, but that's okay again. I'll decrease here. Don't have to fuss about it being perfect. You just want it to flow fairly nicely. I'll decrease here. Kind of flow it as it goes and then once you get yeah the cl the more you decrease the quicker that hole closes up but you don't want to close it up to where it's flat and then let's do another decrease here so i'm not even counting right now i'm just kind of decreasing a little as i go and yeah disregard this part this should be sticking out more okay so it's getting there. See how it kind of like literally shapes the top? Maybe other patterns do that. I don't know. 
like I said, I don't really follow. I, I've watched a couple tutorials. Um, of course, Crystal, because she's like the queen of tutorials. And I, I have her flash drive, but I don't have my computer fixed yet. Gosh, one of the first things I'm going to do when I get that computer fixed is pop in that flash drive. Check out all her loveliness. She's so talented, as are so many people on here, you know. And I would be normally embarrassed to share my products um, on here against up against all these amazing, talented artisans. But the reason I don't mind putting myself out there as an inept <laughs> crocheter is that the community is so kind that they still, even though you're beginning like me, you know, everybody is so kind and, and supportive and gosh, I, I, I can't say enough how much I love you guys. All right, so now what I'm doing, because I'm at the top, is every, every other stitch, I'm gonna do one, and then the next stitch I'm decreasing. So I'm really pulling that top together without it looking like a cone head or pointy. One, and then I'm gonna do another decrease because we don't want a pointy top, which in this hat, it might be fine. Well, I did another decrease, skip that one, whatever. Yeah, I'm just gonna do decreases now. Now you can, now I only have a tiny, a tiny spot there. So I'm gonna show you something else I do. So I'm gonna take some yarn, give her a snip, and pull this tight. I would do this with a hook, but I don't have, I have the hook. Pull it through so I've got a little bit of a knot. Oh, excuse me, then get a darning needle. Threader. Oh, I bought some uh, yarn threaders and thread, um, the threader things, you know, you hook it on there. And they're just silver things and I, I wanna make some polymer little circular things that I can put on either side and, and attach them in the middle. And those will go in some of the boxes of the, the giveaways and happy mails. All right, so what I'm doing here is I'm just gonna, I think this is called the whip stitch. Oh my gosh, oh, there we go. Pretty sure it's the whip stitch and I'm just going from the outside in. You can go from the inside out. You could do one, one of the loops. I'm doing both of the loops. If you skip a loop, not a big deal. So I'm really just, I believe this is called whip stitching. Those few stitches left. Because if I kept coning, if I kept doing that other thing, um, it would have been pointy. This is gonna eliminate it from being a pointy top, I hope. And I'm back to the beginning because here's my knot. Hello. Oh my gosh, what did I do? Oh, there we go. And I'm just going to pull it really tight. And see how that doesn't make it like you're going to have like a little pointy if you don't. So did that, pulled it tight, hand inside. Pull the yarn through to the wrong side. And see that? So we closed it up. Looks pretty good, right? Go on the inside. You know how to do all this stuff, I'm sure, but I just go through the back, wrap that twice, hold it, pull it through, give it a tug. That's a knot. Do her again. Wrap it twice. Hold it at the bottom. Pull it through. Leave a bit of a tail may or may not weave that in because it's going to be inside. It's not going to be a problem. So there we go. There's our cap, which I believe is going to be way too small for my head. All right, I'm going to pause you. So don't fall asleep. If you already fall asleep, just keep napping. Mm. Okay, we're filming again. Boy, just not getting the hang of this. Anyway, um, I, I do apologize. I really should have an overhead light on and I Meant to do that while I had you on hold. Um, all right, so I measured the cap, because some people do that, and it's a, about 10 inches around. But remember, I have a small head. I'm, I'm almost the size of a child, and eight feet, I mean, eight feet, yeah. 
it's, that'd be that'd be big. Eight feet, you could make it be a huge condom. Um, eight inches. So this is for probably more like a teenager size hat. 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 I have to start emphasizing my words. And we're going to make the green horn here, which that's going to pop, right? And then I, we're going to do the horn part of the horny hat that I showed you here on the other one. I did already make a yellow eye, but I'll make one with you. It's easy enough. I just can't find it. And again, I still don't know what I'm doing with the top horns. We'll get to that when we get to that. I'll figure it out. So I did mention that I wanted to strap around this horn. <laughs> I'm going to start from the top, but before I go too far down, because it's going to be tar very hard to, to um, turn inside out, and I want to wrap the green around it, I'm going to tie this green. So I've already cut a piece of green, put it in a darning needle. So when I get started with this, maybe I'll just leave that here and do that. All right. Smaller. Oh, hold on. Can I get it without knocking shit over? Hold on. All right. I'm going to use a smaller hook on the horns. This is, hopefully we'll know, 4.5, and it's still a four weight. Sorry about the wigglies. Leave a little bit. I'm going to leave some tail because the, the tail um, is also going to be like stuffing in the inside. So there's our start. If I remember correctly, I think I chained two. Then went into that first one and chained two. I'm, I'm guessing this is what I did. And now it's really a matter of folding it down. This is going to be the site you see, the right side, and then the wrong side. And what I did was kind of just grab a stitch, but leaving the bulk in the back because again, that's going to become part of the stuffing. And you want to make these stitches fairly tight, but not so tight that you can't get the hook in. And see how I'm pushing that up? See how it's kind of giving it a point? So I'm way over here, and I'm only going to grab one. I'm not going to go through both. Just grabbing one loop. Perhaps, there we go. Pull that up. Pull it through. The beginning of this could be a little bit trying, but not not big deal. So then I'm going to go again to like the. I'm just guessing because I want to keep this as a point. Maybe I'll grab this one here. Maybe I won't. Maybe I will. Maybe I won't. Maybe I will. One more try. Okay, good. I was going to say one more try, and then I'm out of here. All right, pull it through that one. Then I'll go to this next one, and again I'm only grabbing the outer loop because I want that to have a pointy pointy end and then I'm going to the next one and now this one because it's looking like it's kind of straight so this one J there we go I might put two in yeah let's do that we're gonna throw two in this one so that's going to give it a little bit more uh, you know, wider around because we're we want to increase instead of decrease. Okay, so then I'll go to the next. Now, now I'm going to start going through both. Okay, so now we're going both. So that that's just the way I start it, so you get more of a point on the top. So now I'm going through both. If you don't get the exact ones, it's not a big deal, but you pretty much can can see. And on this one here. I'll do two, just to have a little bit of a, I'm oh, sorry, I'm going near me. Hope I was staying in screen. Um, do two there, but see how it's, how it's pointy. Now, before I go any further, because I would like to put this green wrapping around the bottom, I'm going to pull this in 
and out through the top. Okay. And I still have that tag. And I'm going to tie them. So this might be interesting. I've never done this before, so we're doing this together. So I'm going to tie these two pretty tight. And then both of these tails can be used as stuffing in there. And then just leaving that as I go, because I'm going to use it after the fact. Okay, so now... Just uh, single, single, crochet into the two. All right, this might become a problem with these knots, so I do have an opening, but I'm gonna take this and see if this works. Maybe even the back part might work better. Kind of shove them in there now, right? Get them out of our, or maybe not. through the side yeah this looks kind of I mean I, I've never done this before so if I did it a couple times it would probably I'd probably be able to do it a little more suavely oh another word for my dictionary I do not think suavely is a word oh well I thought I was being clever but maybe not See, when I'm shoving them in and then trying to pull the, the yarn that I'm working with out, they're coming out with it. I got most of it in there. Okay. So now I'm going to the next double stitch. And maybe this one I'll do too. And again, depending on how short or long you want your horn, or how wide or thin you want your horn, will dictate how many increases you do as you go along. So basically this is what you do. Just kind of do a few, do an increase when you feel you want one. Like I'll do an increase there. And it, it does, this is a little trying what I'm doing now, but it does get easier obviously the farther down you go. And I'm also using a small hook for this four weight yarn but I'm doing this like there's a hole there so I'm probably going to stuff this I and if I do have some green wool that I've dyed maybe I'll throw that in there but since that's expensive I might just stuff this instead with polyfill I might stuff it with this color yarn this way, if you do see any, you know, if there's any holes in there, you look at it, you'll see at least the green. So I haven't done a, I haven't done an increase for a bit, so I'm kind of going around to see where I'm at. So I haven't done an increase. So let's get it to a, a manageable point. And I'm, I'm pulling these stitches fairly tight. So that's part of the struggle, but you're only making it small enough. It's not, it's not a big deal. All right, so you see how that's coming out? And then we have this, which, oh, oh my. Yeah, that pulled, I should have pulled it tighter within, but I was, again, I'll straight, I'm not stressing. I'll figure it out. Um, so there we go, we're getting that going, and it's just gonna be a matter of going around and adding you know, an increase here and there to what you feel, if, if you wanted to get fat big or you wanted to keep skinny do less do more and that so i'm gonna i'm gonna continue on this and put you on pause doing so good this so far we're doing good whoops forgot to tell you so i hope you didn't go too far on your horn otherwise your horn's gonna be straight out what i forgot to tell you and i was a little bit distract distracted because the rusty's little cat that she found uh has found a one of my yarn balls and is having a field day rolling that all over the floor. If you might hear her or you might see her, and that yarn is gone now because my floor is filthy with animals. I don't know if you could see her. Hold on. That's the back of her, but there's a yarn ball. Yeah. 
That is Rusty's little cat that you found. Oh, there we go. All right, this, also this, this tutorial is, oh my God, sorry. It's getting really long, so I'm probably gonna break it up into a couple of them so as to not drive you all nuts. All right, what I forgot to do, and it's not a big deal, I'm only this far in, is, let me move the hat. Um, when doing the horn, if you want the horn to have a, a, tur a, a turn to it, then your increases are all on the same side. So I'm going to, yeah, I, I you know, distracted. And also this little hangnail thing on my, <laughs> my nail hurt. It's just bugging me. I get distracted very easily. All right, so basically what I'm, I'm putting a hook here, a marker there, and get my finger in there. And as I go around where I'm going to do the increase will be where the marker is. So only decreases are going to be, and we'll see how this turns out because maybe the end will be straight, the rest will have a curve or who knows. All right, yeah, like again, I'm using a very small hook with a thicker yarn and doing tight stitches. So this is a little bit of a pain, but if I was doing it closer to myself and not trying to do it on camera, I'd be doing it a little more easily as well. I wish I had more funny antidotes to share with you while we're doing this because I'm sure this is boring. All right, so now we're here. And in this loop, I'm going to do the increase. Increase, just two stitches, two chains in the same hook, same hole. Move that over to the next one. So that is how we're going to give it a little slant, a little curve to it. So again, just going to go all the way around. And the only time I'm increasing is when I get to where that stitch marker is. You might want to do a round without an increase, which I'm going to do on this one. So it'll be a little bit more, um, less, or whatever the word is, you know, you know what I'm trying to say, right? And so I'm not going to do an increase on this one because it's going to get wide real quick. And you can always add more increases as you go along. And then the next round, I'll do an increase as I go. So basically yeah that I, I was like oh my gosh i hope you guys didn't go and finish your horn and then flip it back on but um if you did it's not a problem either so it'll just be more of a straight horn all right so now i'm going to do the increase when i get to to the the hook okay so i'll be back Bye. okay so i'm going to end this part of the video figure out what happened in that mess, and then I'll do another video with the rest of it, because this stuff here you can kind of do a lot while you're not having to watch this. But see how this is kind of straight here? Because I didn't do the curl, which once it's stuffed, it'll be better. But see how if you just in increase on one side, it's giving that a curve, all right? And that's the effect I want. So for the main horn coming out the top of the head, I'm going to go farther. I'm going to probably go to here and make it maybe this wide around. Then I'm going to make two other, just like this, in the dark green for the horns that we have on either side. And... Um, I'm not going to do this strappy thing to wrap. Um, that's only for the, the unicorn main, this part here. All right, so I'm going to let you go. Use whatever colors you're doing with whatever. And for the horns, I think that, or maybe a couple more rows, then stop, leave a long tail, not the bottom. Leave a, a fair amount of a tail because you're going to use your tail to sew it into the cap. And then... I'll make two of those and you don't have to count anything just 
have them flat, put one on top of the other, they look about right, that's good. If one's a little off, it's, you know, you're making a monster. And then for the, the, the nose, the main horn, I'm probably gonna bring it out to about here, thereabouts, and then cut pieces of the green, stuff it in here so I don't, you know, so you don't see white uh, phil philomine in the, in the middle. So that's pretty much it. So from there, so now what we're gonna do, and you do it off, off on your own, is we made the cap, we've got the, the nose, we're gonna do the two horns, you can do that. Um, if you want to try this, basically once I stuff it, I'm going to take this and wrap it around. I mean, it's not stuffed right now, so you're not getting the full effect. But I'm going to wrap it around, and if it's stuffed, it should pull an indentation into where it is, so it'll give it kind of a um, dimensional look. So if you want to do that, and then tie that at the end, and then we'll sew those in. So anyway, because this is like for, oh my gosh, it's almost an hour. Lord, thank you for being here. Um, we're not done. Well, it takes time, and I'm kind of trying to kind of doing it in real time here. Anyway, I'm going to stop this one, and then we'll do a part two. How's that sound? Love you guys. Be good. Be safe.